business world, you guys have chosen a career, and a career path where presentations are very important. I mean, hugely important. So, um, just wanted to make sure you guys understand that and embrace that. And every time you've got an opportunity to do this, you know, learn learn from what you did wrong and get better at it. You know, I'm not a big believer in always just kind of, you know, patting you on the back and saying that everything everything went well. So there were some there were some really every team had some some good points and there were some serious shortcomings I think in, in several of the teams. So you guys need to work on that. Um, um, you know, when you get in, when you get a chance to make a presentation you know, to an investor, you've probably got a fourth of the time that you'll have out there. And one of my rec recommendations to Jeffrey is that you know, maybe in the future shorten up these presentations. However, you've got to balance that with everybody on the team needs to get a, a chance to get out and practice presenting. That's a skill that, that just you got to practice to get better at. So that was kind of a general overarching comment. Is just uh, you know, think of this as a real world situation. You're pitching. You're you're in front of an investor and you're asking them for money. You're in front of a lender or a banker and you're asking them for money. And if there are numerical errors in your presentation, you know, pro forma bus, typos. I mean, it's just your credibility just just gets just knocked at away you know, time and time and time again. So. Think about it in terms of your thoroughness and your overall um, accuracy of your presentations too. So that's kind of overarching. Um, you want to? I was going to say one other thing. Well, I think it's important to communicate your passion about your project. It's also important to be very factual and to support your um, your findings, your recommendations, and and be able to source or cite the source where you got the information or the background. So, you know, we believe, we feel, you can you can believe and feel, but based on the information, and this is what we like, I liked it when people had the source and, you know, a quote of what they found to kind of back up the statements they were making. Because if you just make a, a statement and it's, the investor's not going to want to know kind of what you, you believe, but where did you get that and what, what led you to form that opinion and why are you doing it? So to be very factual and and, and then like Peter said, you're not going to have much time. You've got to establish credibility right away and make it clear that you've done your research and these are the, you know, the, the way we've researched it and these are the conclusions we've drawn from that. But you've also got to be passionate about something. People buy things from people when they're selling something they're passionate about. I mean, if it's dry and it's humdrum, you know, it's not generally not generally going to get uh, the traction. So, but just so y'all know, in the way that we talked about in terms of the way that we scored kind of the teams and their presentations was, um, I think, very important because it kind of helps you to think in terms of how the next time you do it. Uh, number one was present, I mean, actually, your overall master plan. So kind of your vision, your concept and your vision, because that's, that's initially when you're making presentations on projects in this business, that's what's going to grab people. I mean, that's initially what gets people really excited is your, is your, your overall vision and your master plan and what you see this you know, being. So that was number one. So after you get people engaged with a, a vision, it's got to make sense. And like, like Lisa said, you've got to back up your assumptions of your vision with real market data and then, even, and then further refine it with a financial model that makes sense. And you can quickly back up and it's correct. And then third was uh, presentations. So that, that, that embodies the first two. You know, the first two have got to get across, and, and, the, and the third one is how you get that across. So and, and part of that presentation, I think, is uh, building credibility by having confidence but not being overly, you know, and, and if someone asks you a question, they stump you, and, well, we'll just need to take, get back to you on that. Go look at that and get back to you. Don't, you don't, don't know, need to feel obligated to try to come up with an answer if you really don't know it. Just, and I think people appreciate and, and trust you for being honest with them. I, I, I do that every day when I'm asked questions. I don't know the answer to it. I know people that are third years my senior that do that every day. I mean, I, I mean there's one guy I know for sure that, you know, this guy's saved you know, twice as, you know, twice, almost twice my age. I'll ask him a question. I don't know, but I'll figure that out. I'll let you know. That's a, that's a, I don't know is a powerful, you know, I don't know, and, and I'm sorry, but probably two of the most powerful phrases you ever use in business. So, so. Yeah, I, I thought the presentations were, were really extremely good. I felt they were very well choreographed. Yep. So it looked like everybody rehearsed what you were doing, which is very important. Yes. Um, I do think, you know, I mean, the, the, the 
back up and repeat some of the points that they've already made, you know, uh, the passion has to be there. So uh, it's, it's easy in academic presentations or in the real world, too, to, to get too dry and too um, uh, too methodical, you know. Um, and, uh, and without the passion, you're not going to sell the project. You know? um, so, um, but then the hard facts. <clears throat> so, so lots of times, especially with the green and sustainability factors people were bringing up, you, you said, we could use a green roof, or we could use uh, low flow uh, plumbing. Okay, what would I save from doing that? And what would it cost to do that? You know, those are the kinds of facts that it would have been much more convincing to be able to say, you know, to make the, make the comparison and say, the low flow plumbing will cost uh, a very modest amount, but it will save the city an enormous amounts in, in rainwater runoff, uh, uh, having to, to uh, take care of so much of it. So a comment someone made about, you know, the, the total amenity package, I think it was the first group. And I'm a big believer in amenity packages, I think, you know, that differentiates a project. But, and, and it's sometimes as simple as communicating that to the investors, well, that's the reason we've got rents performed here as opposed to here. You know, the market's here, but because we're doing this, you know, we're creating, someone made a comment here about selling, selling the sizzle, not the steak. That's selling the sizzle. Because you know, that's different. Anybody can go out there and design this you know, twenty-story building with forty thousand square foot plates, and you know, throw some rental rates at it, and call it a day. You know, it's what you do with that whole environment and how you sell that and the whole package to people and serve it up to them. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're not doing an average project at average rent and average quality and average everything. No, nobody wants that. So, uh, but. Uh, I think one thing uh, that, that I think is very strong uh, is, uh, is a recognition that a big urban project has lots of constituents. And, and this project in particular, you know, uh, as some of the groups that sort of came out, that, you know, there, there are, you know, there are historic preservationists who care about them. There's transportation experts who care about what's going on. There's, Bankers obviously we care about it. There's environmentalists, there's social activists, and so finding a way to make make it possible for all of those constituents to say yes you know, takes a you know, very careful presentation, and, and uh, I, I think for the most part, you guys did pretty well. On that. I was very impressed. What short amount of time you all had to put all of all of it together to draw on the resources that are available without having to spend money for them. So uh, kudos to all of you for the hard work you put in here. Do you all have any questions that you might be able to answer? Apart from who won? <laughs> you know, the, the one that's still the shot All of you had very good speaking styles and were very confident and, you know, in sync with one another. So it's very well done. And we were all really stunned with the graphics and the visuals. Like, my gosh. Yeah. Whoever gets him on their team, that's not <laughs> <laughs> uh, Honestly, I want to thank my team. Uh, I think everybody worked really hard. Uh, I 
had a really good time. This was really intense. I mean, I've been working my full-time job in doing this, but I, I came home confident, thinking that, you know, my team is working really hard. And I'm going to show up to class the next day, and they're all going to have results. And I'm really happy to be teamed up with you guys. It's been what, fun. What, what was the toughest dynamic? Uh, there, there's, a, there's a little chemistry, you know, there's a little a couple things that we had to iron out, but overall I think we did, we did a pretty good job. What, 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 was, what, was, what was the chemistry issue? <laughs> I don't know if I really want to go into that. I don't think it was pretty accurate. No, no, but, no, let me ask you this. Where did it start? Did it start at the beginning of the process or in the middle of the process? It was around uh, deliverables, and I think I think we should have done better at the beginning of uh, being clear about who had what tasks and uh, and being uh, better about our deliverable, our, our what we expected in our deliverables on direct deadlines. And uh, I think we left sometimes we left a little bit of uh, so, so, uncertainty. So, so communication, yes, and accountability, yes. How about how about the, the front end, kind of the envisioning stage of things? You know, was, was there was there conflict within the team? I mean, I don't want we're we're going over here, we're going over there. Did someone have to kind of ground the team? Not really. We did our site visit. Patrick did the Heinz competition back in January, and so uh, he didn't come with us to site visit. He's very familiar with the site. We did our site visit, and uh, then we uh, got together as a group, and uh, everybody just kind of had like uh, sketches of what they envisioned the site being like, and. Uh, I think he really, Patrick really did us a favor. He uh, really didn't take, he took a very minimal part as far as uh, introducing ideas into brainstorming and to make sure that we didn't incorporate too much of what he did in the highest competition. So um, it was just it was just a collaborative effort of everybody bringing their ideas in their site visit. And uh, it, was, it was a real positive brainstorming session. I mean, nobody's ideas were really, you know, discounted in a negative way. Everybody... Uh, I think everybody, everybody had something that contributed to the final. How, how about the rest of the groups? Did y'all have was there a certain amount of discord in terms of finalizing on what you're going to do going forward? I think that's going to happen in any group here. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's hard. I mean, as, as a leader trying to paint a vision and get people to follow that vision, that's a hard thing to do, especially if you're doing something that's out on out on the edge. I mean, you know, I know I struggle with that sometimes. I, I'll, I'll see something I want to do and trying to get people to follow you. You know, you got to get people engaged in vision, and then something also something I fail miserably on too, and that's you bring up a great point is is once you get the troops marching, you got to leave some of the place after the troops are marching. That's you know got the orders, knows what needs to be done, holds people accountable. Here's what needs to be done. So you got to paint the vision, but you always got to also got to have people that implement the vision. It takes both because you got to things fail. We were pretty lucky. We had probably the most cohesive group. Uh, there, was, there was no strife at all. I mean, in the second day, we're brainstorming designs, and, and about 30 minutes into it, somebody spoke up and said, Okay, we've done enough of this. These three design group, these three financial group, you know, go break up and we'll meet tomorrow and see what we got. And it was. It, it was a strong group. Professor Booth mentioned maybe that was also a, a downside to us since we were too comfortable with each other. I was good. Uh, my next comment was going to be sometimes a little bit of strife is good. Yeah. A, little bit, a little bit of friction sometimes brings out the, the best in people, brings out people's competitive and want to fight. So too much of it's not good. Too, but. I think that makes it look hard to bring too because our group we really had a lot of intense moments, and I think that may have caused. Everyone say, okay, well then, I'm, I gotta, I've got to do more. I've got to be better. And I, I think that definitely was one of the, uh, the things that kind of contributed to our work. I think one of the funny things is that some of the people in our group says, I have no design background. I don't think I can contribute in that. Yet they did. They did, and we pushed them to do that. And I mean, anybody can be a designer, right? A lot of people will argue that that's not true, but I think it is. I mean, people have ideas and just don't know how to put them out. Mm -hmm. Just got to find a way that you're comfortable to throw them out. Words with sketches, whatever. That's a, that's a really good point because sometimes the best idea maybe it's that person sitting there on the other side of the table that just can't draw like you yeah. and can't put that on uh, medium. But they've got a great idea in mind. If you just if you ask the right open-ended question to, to them, then you know they, they might surprise you. And I get designers block, so I need someone to just feed me things. You know, like, tell me what you want, tell me what you like, 
find things online that are good, and, you know, we'll find a way to incorporate it in there. So that was pretty helpful. Well, I just want to say, uh, as another team, and having worked with your team, doing our team, having worked in the same class, we are so appreciative of your work and your diligence and the level of professionalism that you display today. And we are proud to have you as a team in our class. And congratulations. Thank you.